On episode 13 of the Level Up Lounge, we interview Christopher Pirelli, the video marketing extraordinaire. Let's get it started. You're listening to the Level Up Lounge podcast. Level Up. 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 You're listening to the Level Up Lounge podcast. Welcome to episode 13 of the Level Up Lounge. I'm excited because we have Christopher Pirelli in the house. He is the video marketing genius that's going to teach you how to take your iPhone and turn it into the ultimate marketing creation machine. And then in our punch in the face segment, I'll punch, punch, punch in the face. <laughs> We're talking about perceived value. What is the value that new members and prospects perceive when they walk into your business and how can you increase that perceived value? Right now though, let's jump into the interview with Christopher Pirelli. All right guys, I am really excited. We have uh, Christopher Pirelli joining us today. A lot of you guys know him from Doja Muscle. He is like the video guru. Uh, of the internet. And we are super excited to have him on the show today. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Adam. Thank you so much to have me here. Yes, thanks Thanks for taking out the time of your busy schedule to uh, spend some time with us and uh, drop some great knowledge on our listeners. Uh, for the listeners that we have that uh, haven't heard of you, can you just give us sort of a, a snapshot of your background? Sure. Um, I own a company named Pixel Mob, and Pixel Mob is a production company. We have been doing info products and productions for some of the top fitness and martial arts people for the last decade. I've worked with people like Tim Ferriss, uh, Duke Rufus, Alan Belcher. Uh, uh, the, the list goes on and on. But we have uh, another business called Dojo Muscle, and Dojo Muscle has been one of the upshoots and the upstarts in the martial arts industry. That has kind of come out of nowhere, obscurity, to come and and take one of the top spots for martial arts marketing. We do print marketing, and we have an awesome new product called Dojo Videos. If you haven't checked it out, you can go to our site, www.dojomuscle.com. Dojo Videos essentially gives you the ability to have high-quality, high-production-value videos for very affordable, and these videos absolutely crush for people. So that's what I've been up to for the last uh, eight years, ten years I know, I know I've taken uh, one of your courses before. I think it was a video blueprint course that you did. And also just from looking at all of the content that you've produced, your video quality is like out of this world. And I think that's something that's really lacking in the martial arts industry is that people aren't taking advantage of video. And from my experience, even though like I don't really know what I'm doing with video, to be honest, I, I, just, I just put content out there because I know that video performs better uh, in most cases than uh, images on social media. Um, so for the martial arts industry right now, since they're not using a lot of video, where, where should they start if they're, if they're not producing any video content at the moment? So yeah, to speak on that, um, so I didn't go to the uh, MA Super Show this year, but I had a whole bunch of people come back to me and were like, hey, you know, nobody's really talking about video at the Super Show. And that's really, really, uh, that's actually disappointing in the sense that I feel like sometimes the martial arts industry is a little bit lagging behind other industries. So my goal is to try to bring everybody up to speed with this. Sometimes. So when, yeah, sometimes <laughs> in, some, in, in some areas, you know, they're excelling, but video. Yeah, I agree with you. So, so to just give you a basic foundation on video itself, right? Video, what, people ask me, well, why is video so powerful? Well, if I had to put it into a sentence, it is the closest thing for you to sit in a room with a person. It touches on multiple senses. It allows you to connect emotionally. And the person watching the video gets to be a spectator as opposed to something like copy or ad copy where a person has to actually read it disseminate the information, translate it in their mind, and then act on it. Or not act on it. But when you watch a video, essentially you're just looking to get somebody to feel something. And video does that better than any medium out there currently. The only other thing that you can possibly do, like mentioned, is be in the room with the person or be at a concert of some sort. But video is something that should be harnessed by every single school owner. Now, it's not being used. And I see, um, I, I, I would surmise the reason why it's not being used is the same reason that 
a lot of other industries get stuck with video and that's there's a lot of options and there's a lot of different decision making to to take place to make videos to make even just general videos so people what happens is i think people get stuck in this sense of analysis paralysis and they don't really kind of complete the videos that they would need to to make to get out there and to get their brand noticed and one of the things that i can say is that from doing this for a decade the way to harness this for any martial arts school is to simply think about it from the point of view as the viewer. And if somebody is in your market and let's, let's say, for instance, you're, you're selling, uh, you're marketing a kid's class, right? A martial arts kid's class and you're selling to parents. So being selling to parents, what do parents really want to see? Well, they want to see safety. They want to see uh, camaraderie. They want to see fa family atmosphere and kids having fun. They want to see that their child is going to have discipline, uh, learn discipline, learn focus, and the things that martial arts brings to the table for not just children but adults as well. One of the th ways to really capture the essence of that is to tell stories. We've been telling stories around campfires since the dawn of time. That's how we communicate. We really resonate very well with stories. Now, people go, well, okay, great. So what stories do I tell? Well, there's a lot of different stories, but essentially you can create a story from a transformation that has happened by a student, a story that something that has transpired in your life that day, that week, that month, that year, or maybe a few years ago. Um, there's so many ways to connect with people on the storyline basis. And it's a shame that peop not more people aren't actually out there telling their story showing their culture on video and getting their message out to the world because ultimately if you're not getting the message out your message is just going to live inside your school and people are not really going to see it you walk around at this point with every tool that you need you walk around with a phone uh five years ago you couldn't literally maybe maybe a little bit longer than five years ago but you you'd need Deep pockets, you need a budget, a lot of people with a lot of equipment to come in to film you. But now you walk around with everything you need in your pocket. So that has given us the tools and the accessibility to create videos. But because that has given us the tools, not all videos created equal. And there's a lot of, I'd like to say for lack of a better word, there's a lot of lazy video being put out there, which is not really thought out, not really conceptualized. And it's just like picking up your phone and and speaking to the camera. And I don't know necessarily if that resonates with everybody. I think there's a better way to do it. I kind of outlined that in the blueprint. But yeah, if you got to, the best advice I can give is start shooting immediately and do, it's like anything else. If you're going to get a black belt in jujitsu or karate or anything, you have to show up. You have to be consistent. You're not going to get better if you don't. If you don't put the mat time in, you're not going to become a black belt. So that's the basis of what we try to push on our clients and our customers and try to explain to them that it's not necessarily about perfection. It's more about getting acclimated to telling your story in a unique way that's going to resonate with your audience. Now, do you think a lot of that lazy video is sort of coming about because of uh, people like Gary Vee that just are, are telling entrepreneurs to document, document, document and not worry about that? Yeah, well, this so when you look at it from a perspective of – Gary Vee is talking often to many entrepreneurs, right? So if you you have to look at the market that you're speaking to. Now, different markets are going to resonate with different content, and sure. the way that you approach them is in a different way. I found that martial arts uh, – people that are going to purchase martial arts lessons, they are inundated already with advertising – I mean, we were all inundated with advertising. You literally, you could be in your, your car driving and you have your Waze app, uh, your Waze app open and Dunkin' Donuts coupon pops up. There's a, a, a an electronic billboard that is literally making me go off, of the, off the lane because I'm looking at it. So <clears throat> we're so inundated with marketing at all points and there's so much mass information and lots of different there's one person telling you to do it this way and one person telling you to do it this way. What I've found that works is to have something that could be raw and rugged uh, in the sense of just picking up your camera and telling a story, but also 
to put in some extra B-roll, some action footage, something that tells the story in a way visually that backs up the message, that backs up the video, and that helps support the story. So I've seen a lot of times where people in the martial arts industry specifically will jump up on a Facebook Live and then be like, hey, we're just going to wait here until people come on. I mean, like that um, immediately is no good. That's you're a you're way to catch interest. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're expecting somebody to sit around and wait fifteen, twenty, thirty, I know a minute before you start talking. You're already shortchanging yourself. <clears throat> and then I find a lot of times people will jump up there and be like, "Hey, this is my school. This is what we do. We have awesome thing." And I mean, it's self. Promotion. In some senses, it's self-serving. Where it, I don't know if that necessarily connects to somebody who's a mom who has a child that's maybe being bullied in school or some, or an adult who's overweight and needs to get into, wants to build their confidence, but they're intimidated by martial arts. I mean, look, I train jujitsu now for, I was just talking about this last year. I, I actually thought I trained for seven years, but I'm going on my eight, eighth year of nice. training jujitsu and it's an intimidating sport. When you're walking outside, I see so many men and women pass by. They'll look in. They'll see that, like, you'll pop your head up and look at them, and they'll be like, put their head down and take off. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an intimidating thing to, to have. So the way that we can get rid of that intimidation is by connecting with people and, being, and putting storyline out there that is like, hey, look, I've been through this in my life. Maybe you relate. But this is – martial arts has helped me change myself. Like for instance, to share a story about myself, I was claustrophobic for a long time. Um, I also was deathly afraid of public speaking. This right now, what we're doing right now, I, if I think about this 10 years ago, I would have never thought I'd be on podcasts or being asked to speak or any of that. Um, Jiu-jitsu changed all of that for me. I could literally stand in an elevator with 50 people and not feel freaked out anymore because of what I've learned from jujitsu. So those are things that I feel resonate with the people that are going to purchase your service. And sometimes that's not really put to the forefront. What's put to the forefront a lot is, hey, look, we have a 5,000 square foot facility. Look at all these trophies we won. Nobody really cares about that. They really care about the results that they're going to get. And at the end of the day, as much as you know, we all – train martial arts and, and we're promoting martial arts, people are not really buying punches and kicks and chokes. They're buying confidence. They're buying a better life. And that's what you're selling. You're selling better. So if you can make that connection via story, you're way ahead of the game because most of the market isn't really even doing any of that stuff right now. I'm glad you mentioned that because I've we've touched on this on this show with a few of our other guests as well. It's not about the trophies at your school or what you've done or the accomplishments that you have because really no one gives a crap, um, especially a new mom coming in. She doesn't care about your trophies. She cares about is her child going to have fun? If, is it going to be safe? Is it going to be a family-friendly culture? Is it going to be clean? And I think uh, touching on what you said, making sure that – the, the video content is touching on the, the pain points of the consumer is huge. Um, and I see that a lot with the videos that you've, you've done. Um, I've, I've, I, I think as long as I've been following you on Facebook, I've watched like every single video you've posted, but like, like seriously, that, that, that was the first thing I noticed. The very first video I watched of yours that you did for a uh, martial arts school. I was like, man, I'm like, that video did an, a killer job touching on every pain point that uh, uh, an adult student, I think it was towards, that, that video was geared towards adults. I mean, that touched every single pain point that an adult student would have, why they would need martial arts or, or need jujitsu. And, and that's fantastic. So I, I definitely think that's something if you guys are doing videos, thinking about those pain points. Chris, what, what do you find is the best way for school owners to, I don't know, connect with the correct pain points of their consumer? Okay, I'm glad you asked this question because this is something that like I literally... I need to record a video about this because I've, I've been asked this question so many times. So one of the things that I find, um, and this goes not just for martial arts, but for any type of business out there, is that essentially it's extremely important for somebody to understand what the pain points of their audience is. 
And you'd be surprised at how many business owners actually just guess. They're guessing. Yeah, they're guessing from the point of view as an expert who's devoted half of their life to doing this. They have a different mindset. I have a different mindset on video than somebody who's just starting out. I'm an I don't want I don't want to ever call myself an expert at anything, but I'm a professional that gets paid, you know, a lot of money to do these types of videos. So I look at this is my first language, right? But for somebody who's just starting out, this is their third language. And the the thing is, a lot of times we as professionals, we start to conceptualize what the, the, the audience needs or what the market needs from our own perspective. And that doesn't necessarily work because we're so much more advanced or so much higher on the mountain than, than the people who are coming to purchase from us. So there's two ways that I do this greatly. Now, if you have an email list, it is literally gold, golden. The best thing that you can do for your business is to build an email list. And what I like to do, um, is to simply send an email out and I'll be like something just as paraphrasing off the top of the head. I'm freestyling right now, but to think about it, I would be like, Hey guys, I'm creating a new product about creating a home studio for your business, but I'm stuck on what it is where you, I I really could use your help. And, uh, if you can do me a favor and just respond back to this, where is your biggest sticking point when it comes to filming videos in your office or in your home. And literally I'll get tons of emails back. Hey, I can't get the camera to look right. I never look right. My, my, my head looks like it's big or whatever. Right? So that's one way to do it now. Not necessary. And this is another thing I've also found out, uh, in the last few years, which is really mind blowing that a, a lot of martial arts school owners don't even have email lists or they're not building them actively, which is, crazy in my opinion because like everything changes right facebook at some point is going to change google changed myspace used to be king at one point and that's dead so all of the ways the vehicles on how to get um clients and leads and stuff like that is always going to continue to change but what's not going to change is email and what's not going to change is building your own list you know if you have a hundred thousand followers on twitter or or facebook those are not your followers. They are owned by Facebook. At any point, Facebook can decide, I don't want to keep you here anymore and Very shut close. your whole entire entire business down. I know people that used to bank on Google um, SEO and literally lost their business overnight when it got panda slapped or penguin slapped. So that's one way. Build an email list and nurture your email list. Have a conversation. I see a lot of times people, and I, and I try to like, I try to jump on a lot of our customers' lists just to see what they're doing. And some people really understand it. And then some people are really all about sales. And I feel like at this point in time, people are so savvy that they kind of get like shied off or feeling kind of gross when you're trying to sell them all the time. Instead, you should have a nurturing process where you're nurturing the people that you're that's in your audience. And then you are trying to create a connection via email, like Again, stories are a great way. I do it all the time. If anybody's on my dojo muscle list, that's all I pretty much do is send content, send valuable information, and once in a while, we'll we'll run offers. So the email list is a big, huge part. The second way that I've done this really well, and this one works like gangbusters, is to simply put a post out on Facebook and do exactly what – hey, you you could even do it where – there's two ways that I've done it where I'll literally just put a word is martial arts to me to martial martial arts is dot, dot, dot. And you'll see a ton of people just start filling in all kinds of information. But the other thing is um, you could put a post out there and saying, for instance, you know, what is the biggest thing that you struggle with in terms of getting yourself healthy and losing body fat? And you'll get a ton of people that respond back. And those are the answers that you should literally make a document, create a Word document or Pages document, and just copy and paste. I save the videos, I save the posts, and then I'll just copy and paste all that stuff because those are the pain points. That's your audience. They're telling you specifically, this is what hurts me. This is what I'm stuck with. And then you go and you create a solution that fixes that. So I think that so many times people go out and they try to sell their services, but they haven't really figured out 
Like they'll create I mean, martial arts is a little different, but I'm, I'm relating this to any sort of product online. They'll go create the product and then they'll be like, okay, I'm going to figure out the marketing behind it. No, it's the other way around. You always want to figure out the marketing first and then create the program or the product. Yeah, I think uh, Russell Brunson was the, the one that I, I heard the first time say this, that every person that is in your email list is equivalent to like earning $1 a year. So if you have 30,000 people in your email list, he equates that as a earning thirty thousand dollars a year. You're more likely to be in that range as opposed to if you have two million on your list, then it's a, it's a big difference as well. Um, and I think that's something that's getting forgotten a lot now, especially with the focus being on social media so much. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? It's, it's this is one thing. And Gary V says this all the time. Um, marketers are like rats, and they go find the piece of cheese, and everybody goes in that direction. But if the crowd is running that way, it's a good chance that you should be running the opposite way. And I, I like to, it's funny too, because in the last few years, I noticed everybody's jumped online and everybody's doing a lot of um, promotion online. But then the people who still buy the, the print materials will hit me up and be like, man, the print materials are crushing for us. Yeah, because everybody's online trying to do that online thing and they forgot about the print. So now you're different by coming out with print stuff. So everything in marketing seems to come full circle and then comes back around and then comes full circle again. But email, they've been saying since, since I've been on the computer and since 1995, they've been saying that email was going to die and that nobody wants to look at emails. And I still make the majority of my sales via email. I think you have an advantage too, and you're super smart for doing this with your print stuff. It doesn't look like every other martial arts company's print stuff because it's not like the same three kids on every single piece of material. Your stuff is all custom to your clients, right? Yes, and on top of that, you know, this is something that we rolled out a long time ago, but it never really stuck. But I'm going to reboot this. Um, we have a lot of demographic-specific martial arts marketing. That's so huge. yeah, because if you're in an urban setting with minority kids, you don't want a white kid that's on it that doesn't live in your neighborhood. You need some somebody that's going to represent who's your clientele. And for a long time, I've seen a lot of people online complaining about that, yep. that there's no real demographically specific marketing. Um, so we set out to do that initially. I used to actually promote that and never really picked up, but it started to come back around actually when uh Jody Tenton made a mention, mention of it. him sorry I was gonna say him and I had a long discussion about that he did I, I'm assuming you saw the video he did right I did yeah. yeah I saw I saw a video of it he actually was uh one of my original jujitsu instructor and friend Christopher Bruce good friend and he I intru uh, I was introduced to him at a seminar once and then I saw that video and I was like man I even replied to it. I was like, we did that like seven years, six years ago and nobody really wanted it. So, but it's, it's there on the site. I mean, we have like 600 pieces. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is I don't want to just have marketing materials that push the sale all the time. It's like sell, 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 sell. I think today more than ever, it's important to remember that people are not just numbers and leads and dollars. They're people. So if you give them the respect and you talk to them like a person, I think that you'll have a lot better. It might be a longer, slower um, way to capture leads. But then again, not all leads are created equal. I would rather have three really hot, well-integrated, uh, ready-to-buy leads than 300 tire kickers. Sure. Good point. Um Sort of uh, circling back around to the, the video creation aspect, I know when a lot of people think about creating video, the word expensive comes to mind because they think about either production costs or cost of equipment. And I know iPhone is, is a super powerful tool right now. So what are, what are some great ways um, that our listeners can create really good video content and good quality content without costing an arm and a leg? And is, is there like the one piece of equipment you recommend that they get for filming video? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. One, one uh, uh, many people today are using uh, Apple, right? Yep. So uh, for the people that are using Apple, there's iMovie, which comes free, which 
I use iMovie a lot. When we're just doing quick videos, iMovie is great. And if you want to step up to like Final Cut, you could work in iMovie and literally send it to Final Cut after you're done with the rudimentary timeline and, and want to add effects or whatever down the line. But you could pretty much do every single thing in your um, in iMovie itself. There's also, I believe, Movie Maker for a PC, which it's not really expensive. It's under 100 bucks. The iPhone or your and Android's actually stepping up in terms of uh, camera is probably the Androids are probably even better than the iPhones. I would say spec wise. I don't like to but, admit that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't like to admit it either because I'm a, a, an iPhone guy. But I always have the uh, one of my uh, lead lead shooters. Always we go on this battle between iPhone and PC. So that's a great way to get started. Now I would suggest there's a piece of equipment if you own an iPhone or an Android to grab. It's called the Beast Grip Pro. It is, I awesome. think, about $127. Um, it's a case that allows you to put the phone in, and it, you have handles. You have places that if you want to put a microphone or if you want to connect a light or if you want to put it on a tripod, it's super it, – it, it's amazing because I remember I used to travel with my equipment, and my wife used to yell at me, and she was like, why do you have that big book bag? You look like a tourist, and you look like a maniac. So I was like, you know what, next time I'm going to just bring my phone. And then I got the iPhone 6 and I was like, it's over. It's a game changer. And I started to just shoot everything with the iPhone. And I have actually done productions where I put iPhone video next to my cinema camera, which is a $6,000 camera, and the lens is $2,000. And you really can't tell – the you, you can tell the difference a little bit, but you really – for the most part, most people will not be able to see the difference. So I suggest those two things. You always want to kind of have a good microphone too. Um, there's a couple microphones that I would suggest. Is it, now that the iPhone has done away with the jack, it's a little bit different. Um, and I go over this in the Video Authority. That's the uh, product that we have, which is the iPhone product. I had to shoot amazing, actually plan, shoot, and finish amazing videos, which are iPhone and a computer. Um, but... The other thing I would suggest is some sort of light. Light is the key to having good video. Essentially, video, uh, essentially your camera is a light recorder. If it doesn't have light, it can't record. And if you notice, if you've ever shot in the dark or in low light, the footage comes out very grainy. The reason why is from a technical perspective, there's something called the ISO, which has to bump itself all the way up to open up the sensor and take in more light. And when it does that, it creates a lot more grain. It makes it a lot more noisy. So the more light you have, the better. The second reason that you should have a light, and you can get, I suggest if somebody's starting out a roto light, you, you can pick them up for a hundred bucks and they run off of double A batteries. Um, the roto light, and you can mount it on top of the B script. The other thing that light does is that almost every single person that owns a martial arts school has overhead lights. And those overhead lights, unfortunately, are not the most flattering lights out there. What they do is because the light comes from overhead, it creates shadows underneath the eyes and underneath the chin, which make you look tired. And the reason being is you have ridges with, from your eyebrow bones and the light can't come into your eye sockets. So you look tired, you get a little zombie effect. And when you have a light that's front on, to the person's face, it fills in, flattens out their face, it beautifies it, it makes everybody look just that much better across the board. So the final thing that I would suggest is if you are using uh, a mobile phone, there's an app called Filmic. Filmic is the app that I use on almost all the shoots and it, it literally makes your um, mobile phone into a high power camera because if you use the regular camera, uh, app that comes with the phone, there's like it's there's there's like parameters on it that doesn't give you the full ability. It's it's meant it's meant for point and shoot, like just turn it on, get grab the footage and go. But if you really want to get the most out of it and the most dynamic range, which is how much light comes into the the camera, then using filmic is amazing. Plus, you have the ability to focus manually, you have the ability to expose manually, and it comes with a little manual. I think it's like eleven bucks. 
That's awesome. I am downloading that app today. Cool. Um, I have one more question for you. Then I want to jump into uh, some quick fire questions that we do with all of our guests. What is your opinion on businesses or business owners doing daily vlogs? I, <laughs> um, okay. So I'm not a huge advocate of daily vlogs. Uh, and I'll tell you why, because I believe that, and I'm not going to say that I'm right or wrong here, but this is just my belief and from what I've seen over the years, I think that it becomes a point in giving too much exposure and too much content. You want to, you know what? I got to relate this to the hip hop world. Okay. I'll understand it perfectly then. Okay. So <laughs> one of the reasons Sean Puffy Combs has always been at the pinnacle of what he does is because he is a master of putting himself out into the public, but just enough, yep. not where he's out. So if you put, so there's a, there's a, I've worked with a lot of musicians and I'm a huge hip hop head. And over the years, if you notice some artists, they put out a lot of, a lot of records. What happens is if you put out too much, and this is something that was discussed when we used to uh, produce for uh, hip hop artists. If you put out too much music, you dilute what you're actually putting out. So if you're it, out there all of the time and people are so readily accessible to you, then your message kind of gets diluted. Now, I'm going to say that there's people out there that literally do this every single day and they do it great. They've mastered, they've mastered, and this is something that's really, really important. They've mastered their message, their messaging, and their presentation. And that's why they get so much, so much um, attention on their videos. The problem is, and this goes for not just the martial arts industry, but for all industries, is people think, I'm just going to start my, you know, I'm going to jump up on lives and I'm, or I'm going to do vlogs every single day. And I'm like, hey, guys, all right, today this is my another, you know, vlog. And nobody wants to see that. No, the, the truth is, if you really want to do vlogs, right, if you take like Casey Neistat, for instance, who made a business out of it, he was interesting as hell. He's funny on camera. He edits crazy things. I mean, he was snowboarding through Manhattan in in this in the uh, the blizzard. So the biggest key that I would say is it's not about getting out your message every single day. It's really about working on yourself, working on your presentation, understanding your audience, working on your messaging, working on your the way that you speak, the way that you are on camera. Because a lot of people go. Well, I make videos every day, but nobody watches them. And then I go to I go to their videos, and I'm like, dude, not for nothing. You're boring. <laughs> You're boring. Not people. interesting, then. Yeah. Yeah. Work on work on the things that make you who you are. Everybody has their own set of genius, and everybody has their own voice. And there's like something that will resonate in every single person towards other people. But you got to be one. You have to work on it, like. The people who excel in anything, they're not practicing come game time. They practice in the off season. They practice on the downtime so that when the come game time comes, they're on point. But what happens is because we walk around with these phones, going back to that lazy thing, is that everybody can just pick up a phone and be like, blah, 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 there's my video, I'm done. Like, dude, you didn't put any any thought process behind it. And all, if you're making a video a day, you should really literally be making five videos a day that nobody sees just to perfect the message and the way that you speak and the way that you present your to your audience so that when you do get up on, on camera, it's not just like a, bore, a snore fest. It's actually something that resonates with people. So again, going back to what you asked, you can definitely do it every day, but I would suggest perfecting yourself, perfecting what you're trying to say, perfecting and understanding your audience goes further than trying to just do something every day, you know? Awesome. I, I loved, I loved your answer on that. And it wasn't what I was expecting the answer to be, but, it, um, I like it. Very good. Reason what were you, what were you expecting? So uh, being that you're a video guy, I was just going to be, I was going to assume at first that you're just gonna be like, Oh, let's yeah. Vlog, vlog all the time. You want to get, get yourself out there. Um, but I like what you said about, uh, making sure that your message is clear first, because I think that's totally something that everybody 
needs to improve on unless you're like Gary V um, where you have like a, a legit message that people want to listen to and it's clear and concise and you know exactly who your target audience is. Right. Right. Like you take Gary V for instance, right. And you go back to the wine library TV, what he started with. And you know, he even said to himself, he would record videos and, and there was a lot of videos that never saw the light of day. And, and th it's that type of mindset. It's the same type of mindset that people get black belts from that just needs to be applied to everything else that they do and, and make sure that when you're doing videos that you're thinking about like, okay, who am I speaking to? What am I saying? Why am I saying it? What am, what, what do I want to elicit? What action do I want to elicit here? And then work with that. I, I mean, when I post videos, there are a lot of times that I'll, I'll do that video like four or five times before I actually get one that I really like. And that's what I think is not being done enough of. So if you do do that background work and you do spend the time training yourself, then sure, put a video out a day. I should probably be putting a video out a day too, but sometimes you don't have the time. Sure. But yeah, definitely. But the biggest thing is to work on yourself. Excellent. All right, let's jump into some quick fire questions. Um, what is your uh, favorite book that you'd recommend for our audience to go read? My favorite book, besides Think and Grow Rich, I would say there's two of them. Can I give two or should I just say one? Give as many as you want. Okay. Um, the E-Myth Revisited is a huge one and that changed my entire world. And there's another book that helped me from an emotional standpoint and it's called Thick Face, Black Heart. And that is a great book for business where it's uh, about that, you know, when you run a business, you, you, you have to have a thick face. You're going to deal with things that are going to sometimes be emotional and you have to have a thick skin. So I, I love those two books. Those two books, they're totally like polar opposite books, but the E-Myth Revisited really helped my business and really because a lot of people, and I know this specifically for the martial arts industry or for any other industry, you, you, you come to the table as a technician, right? You come to the table as somebody who, uh, I'm a martial artist. I've, I have four black belts or whatever. I don't, me per specifically, but you know, and then they go, well, I can run a school, but running a school and owning a school and being a martial artist is two completely different things. Exactly. So understanding that is a big point of it. Those two books really helped me out. Awesome. Now, I think I have a guess for this next question. Uh, music, your favorite music to work out to? Um, I would say as much as a hip hop fan, I am heavy metal. Wow. I totally thought you were going to go with hip hop. No, for, for working out, my two favorite bands are Iron Maiden and Metallica. Nice. All right. Very cool. The favorite martial arts movie of all time? Favorite martial arts movie of all time, The Last Samurai. <laughs> Good call. Awesome. Um, and since since you're our video guy, what's your what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, man, there's so many. Um, oh, that's a tough question. That's a tough one. If I had to say one, one would probably be. That's a tough one, Adam. You got me stuck here. I would say. Because there's so many different genres, but I would say Gladiator. Okay, nice. Um, and then, again, since you're a movie guy, uh, favorite director? Scorsese. Awesome, good choice. Um, what's the app you have on your phone that you cannot live without? Wonderlist. Wonderlist, nice. And then, lastly, if you can change one thing about the martial arts industry, what would it be? Uh, if I could change one thing about the martial arts industry, it would be that people should focus more there's a there's a lot of stuff that's like um how do i say this don't worry about offending anyone either <laughs> yeah so stop getting stop getting enthralled or um starry-eyed by money and fame and all that stuff and while all that stuff's important what really matters is morality and people who are going to be good and going to propel the industry forward. You got to remember something. Um, I mean, I've worked with the fitness industry now for 10 years and fitness industry has it helps a lot of people grow, right? It helps your body, it helps you become uh, healthy, but there is nothing 
that I can say in my lifetime that has helped me as much as martial arts. People who tr- who train other people for martial arts and instructors and schools they essentially like transform people from the inside out. They make the weak strong and they make the strong humble. And that is something that sh- I think there's a lot. Sometimes there's a lot of small mindedness in the martial arts industry and it needs to be like you guys are leaders and sometimes you need to act like leaders and then the marketing needs to show like this is mainstream this is commercial at this point it's no longer karate kid in the back room you know doing push-ups on your knuckles and stuff like that this is real deal and you're you're competing with other gyms and you're competing with other uh industries that are in the health industry and it's important to understand that a lot of times people want to keep tradition and I understand about that, but everything changes and everything grows and it's important that the industry grows with the changes that are going on in the world. And I think that it's, it's coming along. I just – sometimes there there's like pettiness and infighting and s- stupid I agree 5,000% on that. I I thought of one last question I want to ask you. This isn't a quick, fair question. I just want to get your opinion on something. Um, And I think you would know this better than anyone else. Uh, Martial arts schools that do movie nights. Is that legal? Is it legal? Um, From what I gather, and I really, I'll I'll be straight with you. I don't know the full full breadth of this. But from what I gather, they have to pay money to, to show movies. They have to pay money to show anything, pretty much, from what I understand. I believe that even if you play Spotify while you're in the school, somebody could come and hit you with a fine. On the music side of it, that's that's like, I know all about that. I've studied that. On um, the music side, like any, any music, even if you're playing music that you purchased off iTunes, uh, if you're playing it in a commercial setting where customers can hear, you have to pay licensing for it. But the, the movie, like the video film side, like I've done some research in that, but I don't know that nearly as well. So that's why I figured you'd be a great person. Yeah, to unfortunately, I don't, I don't really know that. I, I, I've seen a lot of schools do movie night. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's fully legal. It might be better to just grab everybody and have like a, an outing to the movie theater, but who knows? Okay, cool. Hey, Christopher, I am uh, so grateful that you took time out to uh, spend with us and share with us. I've learned a ton from our conversation today. uh, And I'm sure that everyone that's listening has as well. So thank you so much for taking out time to join us in the Level Up Lounge. Oh, man. Thank you for having me here, Adam. I really appreciate it. And then uh, last thing, Chris, if someone wants to follow you um, and get information about what you're doing and and, uh, learn more about Dojo Muscle and Pixel Mob, um, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? They can find me on Facebook at Christopher James Pirelli. You can check out Dojo Muscle at www.dojomuscle.com. Um, you can also check out the www.ma video blueprint, which is the uh, guide to create content videos for your martial arts school. And if you wanted to create um, stuff with your iPhone, check out www.thevideoauthority.com and that'll walk you through how to create amazing videos with your iPhone. And I can attest, guys, to Video Blueprint is an awesome course. I'm, I'm not a video guy at all, but after going through the course, I learned a lot of like small things that made a big difference on pretty much any time I'm videoing, even if I'm videoing during classes. Um, uh, so make sure you guys definitely check out the courses as well. For for the investment of the course, it's a no-brainer. So Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. And that's actually a great testimonial. <laughs> Yeah, my pleasure. I'll get your recording of it. You can use it in everything. (laughs) Thank you, sir. All right, thanks for joining us, Chris. Appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. Well, I hope you guys got a lot of information and realize how powerful of a tool your smartphone is for making great videos. Next, we're going to jump right into our punch in the face segment. Now, it's time to take a punch Punch, punch, punch. in the face. (laughs) So today, guys, we're talking about perceived value. So perceived value is the value that your students and prospects and trial members, it is the value that they perceive the moment they walk into your school. So one of the things I want you to think of right away is what you're charging for your monthly tuition. Then I want you to think about your facility, how it looks, how it smells, is it outdated or updated, 
and I want you to think about your marketing materials. That that goes Facebook ads, flyers, new student brochures, uh, the different media that you have up on the walls in your school. And when you take all of that and put it together along with the product, which is what's happening out on the mat, what is the perceived value? Is it what you're charging? Because if the perceived value of all of that is 150 per month and you're charging 150 per month, your perceived value isn't high enough. So you need to make sure that all of those things that I just mentioned are completely representative of your brand and all of that perceived value should be like 10 times what you're actually giving your clients and your students. So that way it's a no brainer for them to sign up. So how do you increase perceived value? First of all, make sure that you have everything in your school professionally designed. That means flyers, that means uh, trial cards that you hand out, posters that you have on the wall. Stop designing your own stuff. Pay someone on Fiverr to do it so it looks professional and that the brand looks cohesive, okay? If you guys want an example of this, check out uh, Jason Griffin on Facebook in his Tiger Rock school. The guy has some of the best branding I've seen for a martial arts school. Okay, second thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that your uh, school is up to date so the facilities are up to date, nothing's broken. Fix anything that's broken or cracked in your school. There's stuff that you don't use, get rid of it get rid of the clutter, and the best thing you can do in your school is upgrade your lobby area because that's the first impression when people walk in. So make sure it's looking clean, make sure everything looks up to date and modern, and there should not be any dust, plastic hangers, or wire racks anywhere in your school because all of that is gonna instantly bring down the perceived value uh, of your pro shop in your front end. So go and get the wooden hangers, guys. Get rid of those rack, uh, the wire racks, because those look like something that should be found in a closet, not in a pro shop. And make sure you guys do everything you can to upgrade that perceived value so as soon as someone walks in, they're getting a wow, not a WTF moment when they walk in your school, all right? And then, of course, constantly be looking at your curriculum and see how you can improve things and improve the experience that students have when they start your start at your school. All of those are going to bring out the perceived value. So I hope you guys got some great information and you're starting to reassess some of the things that I just talked about so you can really bring up that perceived value that students get when they walk in the door of your school. Thanks for joining us, guys. Next time, we have Ed Turney joining us, who is a super successful uh, adult martial arts program at his school. But better yet, this guy knows everything about increasing uh, the presence in your Facebook group and the engagement rates in your Facebook group. And he's going to give us some of the things that have worked the best for his school and show us how you can apply them in your own schools as well. See you next time in the lounge. LevelUpMyMusic.com Level Up Music, the number one music streaming service for martial arts schools. Get clean, family-friendly, motivating music mixes that your students and parents will love. It's so easy to use. All you need is a phone, tablet, or computer with an internet connection, and you're ready to start streaming. Upgrade the atmosphere in your school. Get started today.